Good morning, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital Management with a review of the weekend reports for January 5th, 2013. We have a market that's in bullish normal conditions on an annual basis using weekly RSI 14. It's at 62 out of 100 or middle of neutral. 10-day basis using the 10-day NDX, it's, it's, a, it's at 100 or uh, overbought. Percent stretch relative to the 200-day moving average is 6.25%. So we're in bullish category, white bullish. Slope of the 50-day moving average has improved to a positive 0.11, and that's favorable, although that's coded as yellow neutral. Uh, we like it when the slope of the 50 is above zero. ADX 14 is in, improved to 16.2. ATR percentage has raised to 1.14 percent, still at the high end of normal. Uh, the risk index, which is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10 period moving average of the VIX, is almost leveled off at 0.96. That's a risk Z score compared to the last 5,000 days of minus 0.53. You can see a, uh, an, an image of that here. Uh, the deeper the hole, uh, the more volatile the market. You see it's coming back towards the normal. The blended monthly rebalancing holdings for the 26 and 13 ETF portfolios, you can see, still dominated by the globals. With uh, In the 26, it's China, Australia, Asia, less Japan. In the 13 ETF, it's Asia, less Japan, Australia, and uh, the Euro-Asia blend. That should read uh, 1 February for the next reevaluation. Sorry about that. ETF2, the theoretical exposure is at 100%. The model portfolio will be at 100% exposed when adding the second position. This uh, link is to a trade of the week discussion concerning um, details on how we compute this, this new VIX uh, market volatility index. Quick look at the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. Again, you see in the 13, everything's on a buy position except treasuries, which cracked to go below 120. Uh, and you can see the uh, the U.S. is bringing up the, the bottom here. And in the 26, again, dominated by the globals. Uh, market health check. <clears throat> The uh, vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. The horizontal purple line is the swing high um, around 147-ish. See, we're, we're pushing the boundaries on that here with the uh, moves of this last week. Uh, the horizontal red lines are support levels that have held in the past. The central black line is the 30-period regression line. The outer lines are the channel formed by the maximum excursion during the look back period which happened during the sharp sell off from the previous week. Uh, dark blue is the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus one the river. The lighter blue is, a, is the second standard deviation or the flood plane. And you can see how that by definition contained most of the price action in the last 30 days. Uh, the orange uh, Price ribbon is the two-period Bollinger Band, and you can see that we're pushing uh, the upper limits of the regression channel, the swing high, uh, we're beyond two standard deviations above the 30-period average, uh, price is above the floodplain, above the 10-period moving average, above the uh, 30. Uh, you can see the slope of the 30-period regression line uh, as recovered and is improving, getting steeper. Uh, we're overbought on a 10-day, and the jaws of the percent price oscillator are open to the upside. Uh, this is, uh, you know, everything you would expect to see on the indicators based on this jump in um, price, based on an apparent resolution of the fiscal cliff, or at least kicking the can down the road another couple of months. Uh, and now, however, we, what we got to see is a close above 148, and. Um, uh, before we can say that the bull is uh, is officially back, but much better posture than we were uh, two weeks ago. Um, the red region is the 
200 period moving average and the price below that so you can see we've got a, uh, about a six percent cushion there summary of the ETF2 regional report everything is above its four month moving average so all the filters are on buy that gets us this should read 100 percent and zero percent invested in cash sorry I thought I'd updated that um, globals are better than uh, the US inside the US it's mids smalls large than tech the two strongest are IEV and uh, that's uh, European 350 and Asia less Japan the two weakest are the NASDAQ and then Latin America now Latin America has replaced uh, SPY as one of the weaker ones so a little bit of strength returning to the US uh, world market model um, the US is above average for mids and smalls the large caps are uh, uh, below average but you see the Nasdaq has come out of the red where it was last week um, anything Europe is is exceptionally good except the UK which is just above average uh, everything Asia and Asia less Japan is above average or exceptionally so uh, most of the emerging markets are above average except Canada gold silver and treasuries have uh, fallen uh, commodities oil corporate bonds and US real estate below average uh, inside the business sectors, finance dominating, uh, industrials and discretionary are pretty good. The defensive sectors of staples, utilities, and healthcare are lagging. Uh, in every case, um, the global business sector is outperforming uh, the U.S. sector, with the exception of materials and energy. So it's still pretty much a rest of the world uh, news story right now. Summary of the top 30 ETFs based on their relative strength. Again, you can see dominated by all the usual suspects, the globals. And the Dow 30 is sorted by uh, their relative strength column. Uh, Bank of America, JP Morgan. Um, now, Cisco and Caterpillar are kind of the anomaly compared to their peers, uh, are starting to lead the way. Uh, United Tech doing pretty well here, too, at the bottom. Uh, Microsoft, Intel, um, United Health at the bottom. I want you to notice that uh, uh, Hewlett Packard has moved off the bottom up until the you know about the you know the one third off the bottom. So that's been uh, quite a turnaround for them, almost a 15% move off their bottom. Uh, but clearly in Techland, it's Cisco leading the way. ETF liquidity based on the top 30 ETFs by average daily dollar volume. See the volatility uh, spike in, in the VIX. Shifting to the daily report. Uh, now I've, uh, I've rearranged this a little bit so we could make room for the new uh, VIX index and the uh, and the risk Z so we'll get to that in a second won't reread the top line uh, for the gap stats uh, looking at the last 30 days 13 times or 7 and 6 uh, 13 times out of 30 the market is gapped down 7 of those times it's uh, continued to fail for a negative 0.28 additional follow through 6 times it's reversed to close higher for a follow through of an additional 0.67 so the uh, gap downs, uh, the, the more lucrative play has been the morning hook kind of play or the reversal to close higher. Um, 17 times the market has gapped up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, six of those uh, 17 times or about a third of the time, the gap up has reversed to close lower for a minus 0.5 additional follow through. But 11 times the gap up has gained for 0.45 so in both cases the upward move during the day has been the play and so that remains the case uh, until proven otherwise uh, inside the uh, risk index and the risk Z <coughs> um, current reading on the index is 0.945 that's the 30 period move and average divided by the 10 period move and average this is the time series of that over the last 30 days and you can see the slope is starting to get better. The cutoff point for risk on owning risk on assets is anything above one uh, point or uh, is above zero. Excuse me. 
or above 1. <coughs> now we're getting close to that. Uh, if we take the z-score of that and compare it to a 20-year look back, we're at a negative z of uh, minus 0.75, so we've gotten, actually gotten better in the last uh, three or four days as the VIX has declined after the period of, uh, of fear. Uh, no signals in overreaction or channeling. You can see that the volatility has increased a little bit here up to the upper bounds of normal. <coughs> ADX is now improving it to above 15. Now it's at 16 with the bulls in charge. That's favorable because that says a long leg up uh, could ensue from these conditions before it gets to be uh, a strong trend. 10-day um, max pains, uh, United Health, Merck, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Procter and Gamble inside the ETFs. It's uh, uh, the VIX, natural gas, gold miners silver and treasuries. Uh, no swing trade patterns per se, but uh, a handful of uh, symbols that test out favorably on the auto framer. Handful of dojis in the Dow. Uh, United Health and Merck test out at uh, better than two to one on uh, risk reward on the auto framer. Microsoft and uh, IBM are noteworthy Big sell-offs on Friday, and both come in at uh, almost five on the frog quality number. Uh, so that looks very favorable to me for uh, short-term pops. Uh, inside the ETFs, uh, the VIX tests almost at 10 to 1 on its uh, auto framer. Um, at one doji in blended commodities. Uh, DBA, the AG, had a uh, RSI2 value of zero, is number three on risk to reward ratio on max pain range compression, and is almost a four to one ratio on the auto framer, so that one looks favorable. 30 day regression line in the market mosaic here for SPY. See the uh, recovery from that big sell off and pushing the uh, upper limits of the channel. Um, recovering from after a nice move and just a little bit of sell-off here and with uh, again you can see the regression line starting to make a uh, recovery and the percent stretch is back to the six-month normal and uh, the regression line is not yet quite crossed its 10 period move and average but that would uh, um, there's room for it to go here uh, if it can uh, get through 148 the z-scores of the regression line slopes, the 10 period is at the upper bounds of normal, the 30 has started to recover, and even the 90 has started to roll up after coming back to, coming back to normal. So that's postured for a longer term intermediate gain right here. Um, you see price has left the river, the river has rotated to start curling back up after the sell-off period. And again, now that we're through 145, it's got to get above 148 to, to uh, be considered a longer term uh, bull. The four, uh, you know, the river analysis of some uh, four representative categories. Small caps are doing better than the large caps. Gold uh, at the bottom of its channel, and uh, although a regression line crossover has occurred, uh, things look bleak for treasuries here if they can get them at a better price. And just uh, the reference charts as normal. I like this about Microsoft. We saw it had almost a, a f almost five to one on the frog quality number, and its signal to noise ratio above five point says it's very directional intraday. So that one I think should be on your uh, uh, on your short term intraday trading list. The uh, holding stats for different uh, look back periods, all the z-scores, the 5 day is at 1.25, the 10 day at 0.55, the 20 day at 0.76, and the 40 day at 0.32 for SPY. All of those suggest that uh, um, there, we're still within normal bounds on those longer term holding periods, slightly overdone on the short term period here, 
but I, I take the last two days failure to fail as a positive sign that the uh, that the gap up uh, was not a false one. More reference scores were on relative strength and gap statistics, and intraday range percentages. And that's everything I want to cover on the weekend report. Thanks for your attention. Keep your powder dry and your risk measured.